Thank you very much. So um, the issue that we are grappling with here on this table is how to develop good role models uh, in interprofessional practice, because these uh, would uh, serve as a good learning environment for students engaging in IPE. And so challenged with how do we uh, incentivize staff to embrace uh, IPP and IPE using assessment and evaluation as, uh, uh, as a driver for incentivizing faculty to, to do a better job. That was the issue. And so we had a, quite a rich uh, contribution from all of you. Uh, I'll just uh, briefly mention some of uh, the key points. Uh, starting from a familiar ground, using both stu using students to participate in the assessment, uh, contributing to suggest contributing suggestions on our assessments could be done, and actually doing the assessments of IPP and IPE, and providing a feedback to the practitioners and educators regarding what is emerging from the students could be a very good uh, uh, motivation for staff to, to do a better job. But also uh, engaging patients in that assessment as well regarding their experiences in the IPP uh, could also be a motivator for faculty to improve. And also, recognizing best uh, or good performance in both IPP and IPE and celebrating those excellent uh, examples uh, so that others can learn from these examples. That we need to link uh, uh, assessment of clinical outcomes to education. Uh, practitioners want to do a good job in improving patient outcomes. And if, uh, you know, through assessment and evaluation, we show uh, whether these teams are achieving the patient outcomes or not, where they're not achieving the outcomes, it already would indicate an area where the teams have to do a better <laughs> job. And therefore, again, contribute to motivating staff to improve uh, uh, their practice as far as the IPP goes. Um, we need to develop metrics and, uh, and targets um, so that if the targets are met in terms of patient outcomes, uh, then the teams can be incentivized through uh, giving or recognition, giving them a, a awards, or as one person said, giving them a good parking place. <laughs> um, that, uh, I'm sure that was uh, a light comment, but illustrates the point. Uh, so, as part of this assessment and evaluation, we need to link both the academic assessment to the clinical assessment so that the two can reinforce each other and help again to incentivize faculty. We need to communicate clearly the impact on outcomes through assessment. What is the impact on patient outcomes? And we can use existing data, clinical data, to show uh, whether the outcomes are favorable or not, um, and then feed this back to the practitioners uh, in order to, for them to do a better job. In that way, we can begin to build these uh, role models where students uh, can learn from. Now, assessment of teams uh, in what they can achieve also requires that we have to assess individuals in those teams because as there are examples where as a team they have done well or they do well to achieve patient outcomes and yet another team in the same environment does not do well in achieving the patient outcomes. What is the difference? Why is there this difference? And it may require going down to the individuals 
in order to understand why these teams are functioning differently. Uh, we need to link uh, assessment of learners and their expectations to those of faculty um, and assess the hidden curriculum. The hidden curriculum is so important in driving uh, education and we don't pay enough attention to assessing that hidden curriculum. While we put a lot of emphasis to assessment of students, we don't put a lot of emphasis on assessment of faculty. Why don't we uh, use the same rigor and thinking around assessment of faculty as we do to the assessment of students? And if we do that for interprofessional education and interprofessional practice, we probably will go uh, quite uh, a long way. In one of the uh, universities, I think it is uh, Afar's uh, university, there was the creation of professors of integrating knowledge. This is the, that is the level, professors of integrating knowledge. And the idea is, as you hear it, that these professors would work towards integration of knowledge across schools, across uh, disciplines. And the evaluation of the performance of those uh, professors uh, contributes to promoting IPE. Also in the same institution, there's the requirement of when hiring new deans to show how they commit to IPE. So the assessment and evaluation of the, poten of the candidates who are uh, uh, vying for this position. That assessment and evaluation also is contributing to promoting IPE and IPP. We need to recognize uh, team science and understand it better uh, as a way of working towards this. My conflict, of course, is that everything that you're saying is such a pearl. The last three pieces, in fact, the professors of integrative science and integrative knowledge, the concept of choosing our leaders who embrace IPE. Apparently, that should rank as high as research intensivity. And this idea of the science is so, so innovative and, and wonderful stuff that I'm soaking in, but we will have to move on. So I will wrap it up. But it's really good stuff. I'm going to take all those ideas home. Yes, yes, I will have instructions for our facilitators and scribes uh, as I make them up as we go along. Um, over to table six. Thank you, Nelson. Was there anything else? Oh, sorry, I, sh I did cut you off. but uh, There was only one other point probably that I could mention, and that is uh, there was an example where faculty were invited um, to participate in developing uh, an IPE tool, assessment tool, and this is assessment of students, assessment of faculty. But because the faculty were engaged in developing these, uh, t these tools, that created commitment to the process. Um, it is yet to be evaluated to, to see, uh, you know, how much impact this has uh, caused in terms of motivating faculty. To have them in, create their own enough, assessment yes. tools is fantastic. At our institution, one in Toronto, one of the challenges that our, uh, our residents have brought to us is that they get evaluated on the seven CANMEDS roles, which are expert, communicator, collaborator, scholar, advocate, manager, professional. I think I got them all. Um, and uh, they expect that their faculty should be also be evaluated on those roles. Our faculty just get evaluated on the scale of Likert scale, how well did you, you know, transmit the knowledge? I think that's a very strong challenge for us. Table six, uh, over to uh, Bjorgen, to um, her colleague Jehu, uh, Belgium and South Africa.